Hey YouTube, it's ACU, and today we have some very important updates to discuss in the world of iOS as well as jailbreaking. Now, before we get into anything, down below in the more info, there will be a table of contents with timestamps that will allow you to more easily skip through certain segments of this video. With that said, Apple is not only seeded OS 10.11.4 beta, but also Watch OS 2.2, TVOS 9.2, and iOS 9.3. That's right, iOS 9.3. It's interesting because iOS 9.2.1 is still in beta form and we haven't received a new beta of iOS 9.2.1 yet. So we're just inside of Apple's regular developer portal, which is at least partially accessible without having to sign in. You can see iOS 9.3 beta is listed here. It says this is a pre-release version of iOS 9.3 for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. And for the post date, it is today, January 11th, 2016. But when we scroll scroll down, we still have iOS 9.2.1 in beta 2 form. And as you can see, that was issued back on January 4th, 2016. Now, this may suggest that a release of iOS 9.2.1 is imminent since we didn't see a new beta iteration of it today. Instead, we have iOS 9.3 beta 1. So it is possible that Apple will release iOS 9.2.1 to the masses shortly. And considering that's the firmware that Taiji decided to target instead of iOS 9.2.1, 9.2, this could pose problems for jailbreaking. Now, we'll get into that more in just a second, but what does iOS 9.3 actually have to offer? Well, I'm logged in to Apple's developer portal now, and you'll notice that we have a new iOS 9.3 beta release notes link that we can just tap on to then be redirected to this document on Apple's site. Again, the release notes for iOS 9.3. And there are really only two major changes over even iOS 9.2, but remember, that's twice as many changes that we know for iOS 9.3 than we do for iOS 9.2. 2.1 beta. However, iOS 9.3 has a few unlisted changes, but we're going to go over the two main ones here first. Underneath the Apple Watch for the known issues here, you can see that in iOS 9.3, the Apple Watch app can pair multiple watches at a time. However, all watches must be running watchOS 2.2, which is only available through the developer seed. Again, this is the latest version of watchOS that I mentioned more toward the beginning of this video, watchOS 2.2, which really doesn't include any other changes besides the fact that it is compatible with iOS 9.3 beta. And now scrolling down pretty much to the bottom here for the second change underneath Safari, it says, quote, it is now possible to switch tabs, navigate, and close a web page while displaying a JavaScript dialog, for example, an alert, a confirmation, or a prompt. So guys, that's actually pretty cool. If you've ever encountered various spam websites with numerous pop-ups that simply don't let you leave, then iOS 9.3 should rectify that. And now one of the biggest unlisted iOS 9.3 changes is a feature called Night Shift that will basically reduce blue light exposure similar to flux on jailbroken devices. Notes can now also be password protected and there are new features for sorting by date created, date modified, or alphabetically. The For You section inside of Apple News has now been updated with new algorithms and there is a landscape mode inside of Apple News for inline video playback. The Health app has even been updated with a new interface and CarPlay includes iOS 9 features for music such as new and the for you sections again that are built into Apple Music along with the nearby feature built into Apple Maps. And iOS 9.3 is also tailored to educators more now so than ever because it allows for shared iPads for students, a new classroom app, and an Apple School Manager feature. While that's great and everything, how does that affect jailbreaking? As I've stated a number of times in my jailbreak update videos for both iOS 9.2 and 9.2.1, Taiji was most likely going to target the latter simply because it went in into beta stages while they were still working on developing the latest jailbreak. So how does iOS 9.3 affect that? Because jailbreak developers do like to wait for the latest releases before issuing new jailbreak utilities. That way, as many people can jailbreak for as long as possible. Unfortunately, we just don't know because this is a really new situation. We haven't really in the past had a time where two firmwares were in beta stages simultaneously when we knew that a jailbreak was definitively being developed. So I wish I had more information for you guys and that I could definitively state which firmware Taiji will release their next 
next jailbreak for. Unfortunately, we just don't right now. It's too early in iOS 9.3's beta life cycle to state one way or the other, but I will state this. It is conceivable that iOS 9.3 may close one or more of the vulnerabilities that Taiji intends to exploit in their next jailbreak, similar to what happened with iOS 9.1 beta and Pangu's jailbreak for iOS 9. Now, if that's the case, then like Pangu, Taiji may rush their jailbreak for iOS 9.2.1 once it is issued to the masses. And as I stated previously, because iOS 9.2.1 wasn't updated in beta form today and 9.3 was, then that most likely indicates that iOS 9.2.1 is close to a public release. So assuming iOS 9.2.1 is released within the next week or so and Taiji doesn't intend on targeting iOS 9.3 for whatever reason that may be, whether it's because it closes exploits or something else entirely, it is possible that we may see a new jailbreak utility for iOS 9.2.1 with backwards compatibility for both 9.2 and 9.1 anywhere from one to two weeks following the release of iOS 9.2.1. But remember, that's the best possible case for a jailbreak soon rather than later. We simply don't know whether they're going to set their sights on iOS 9.3 or not. And to be updated more often, just be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. I will keep you completely notified of any and all new developments that occur in the world of jailbreaking. I pride myself in releasing new jailbreak updates to keep you informed on absolutely everything that happens. And for those of you who want to install iOS 9.3 beta 1 for whatever reason that may be, it's very simple. You can actually employ the use of a method that I have highlighted a number of times on my channel or iOS 9.3 is now available for developer download using a configuration profile. Now this is the first time that's a possibility. So if you can obtain the configuration profile, it's as easy as installing it on your device and if you're on Apple's developer portal, all you have to do is just tap on download and then from there it asks you to choose a device. So we want to install this on our iPhone and then it will redirect us to the settings application and as you can see it states iOS beta software profile. All we have to do from there is just tap install, enter our password, and then it's going to ask us to reboot, and then the update will be available inside of settings general software update, just like the public beta iOS program. So I'm actually going to click on cancel to that. We're not really interested in installing it, and we're actually just going to switch back to Safari since it doesn't really seem to be canceling there. But if you can also obtain the IPSW for your device, meaning the specific restore image, it's very simple. All you have to do is just plug your device into your computer, launch up iTunes, and then if you're on a Windows-based PC, hold down the Shift key. If you're on a Mac, hold down the Option or Alt key, and then left-click on Check for Update, navigate to that beta IPSW, open it, and then it will update your device to it, and it will retain all data. And of course, while it pretty much goes without saying, if you are jailbroken, do not update because you will be locked out of jailbreaking until a new utility is released, again, likely by Taiji at this point. What's more, the configuration profile won't even work if you are jailbroken broken. And if you guys want to be notified more often, such as when I am working on new videos, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Finally, if you guys want to win a brand new fourth gen Apple TV, just navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of mobile Safari and sign up. It's very easy. Once you do, you can download some sponsored apps for points. Just so long as you do earn points, go to the third tab at the bottom and you will have your own custom referral link there. What you need to do is take that link and post it in the comment section of my fourth gen Apple TV unboxing. I will We'll have it linked for you guys on your screens right now. And actually, speaking of fourth gen Apple TV, quickly I wanted to mention the changes found inside of tvOS 9.2. It now includes official Bluetooth keyboard support, it adds folders for applications, it adds map kit so they can implement Apple Maps into their apps, additional Siri language support, and a revised application switcher interface. And thankfully, if you have a USB type C to USB type A cable, then you can just plug your fourth gen Apple TV into your computer and update it using the exact same method I highlighted for a restore image update on iOS with iOS 9.3. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. <laughs>